Okay, here we go. In my career as a data analyst and then a data engineer, I've always had some side project on the go. In fact, this YouTube channel is currently my side project. Before this, I wrote a book, had a blog, made some websites, made an app, made an NFT, launched some music on Spotify. I'm always doing something and I've learned what works for me to get these things done. In this video, I'm sharing with you my Zen of side projects. It's the strategies and mindset that I find most effective in accomplishing these things while holding down a career. These ideas came to me organically over time and I've framed them as four Zen concepts. If you're new here, hey, I'm Alex, I'm a data engineer, and my YouTube is all about helping you grow as a developer while balancing other aspects of your life. Idea number one is about morning rituals, starting your day with focus and working on your side project. One of the core principles of Zen is to start fresh. It's referred to as beginner's mind or shoshin. It involves approaching life with a sense of openness, curiosity, and non-attachment. I think the time of day when this is most readily available to us is first thing in the morning, when your mind is completely fresh and rested from the night of sleep. And you also have the opportunity to keep your mind free from distractions during this time. You know, unless you grab your phone and check your email or something, but you know, you wouldn't do that first thing in the morning, right? One nice thing you could do is have a short ritual to prepare yourself for the work. So for example, you could sit and do a meditation, like transcendental meditation for 10 minutes, or you could do some journaling, or you could bike around the block, or maybe you could do some jump rope. Um, those sort of activities really prep your mind, the physical activities. I have a whole video I'm going to make on morning routines um, and what I like to do. But I would suggest you use some of this time during this ritual I'm describing to think about your side project and picture what the end state looks like, the big picture of where you're going with this, and then bring it back down to the very next step the goal, the thing that you're trying to accomplish right now in this next work bout. Because this is the start of the day and your mind is so clear, it's gonna allow you to like dial in that focus and be really effective with your time. So when you do get to work on your project, make sure you dedicate 100% of your focus to accomplishing that goal that you've set for yourself today. And practically speaking, this means setting out a chunk of time in the morning that you can dedicate to this. And the easiest way to do that, or at least the most straightforward way to do that, is just to push your bedtime up. If you can get to bed an hour earlier, you can get up an hour earlier and have time to do this. The other way is to shift things you usually do in the morning around to give yourself time for this activity. So if you do this every day, you're guaranteed to make some progress. But in order to make effective progress, you need to do this next idea, which is only focusing on one idea at a time. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is scattering their energy across too many projects. This could apply to side projects or projects at work. You're simply not gonna make the progress that you're looking for when you're spreading your energy across too many things. This can apply outside of projects as well, even to hobbies, I would say. But when you're doing this, when, when you're not picking one thing, but let's focus specifically on side projects and say you have a few of them that you're trying to push along, I believe that two things happen when you're trying to do this, when you're scattering your energy this way. The first is that you need to context shift between projects. So this ends up using your energy because it's hard for our minds to do these context shifts, but also your time because it takes time for your mind to do that context shift. So I see these as waste products. You're wasting energy and you're wasting time in order to do these context shifts, which is gonna slow down all of your projects it's like not useful, it's not efficient time, unless it's essential that you're doing more than one thing at once. So when it comes to a side project, you're balancing that with all the other things in your life, including your job. So that's a huge context shift. That That's one huge context shift that you have to make. That's not a waste product, like that's necessary. But picking more than one side project to work on at a time is gonna force you to waste energy on these context shifts, in my opinion. Opinion. But there's another reason not to do more than one at a time, and that's the plateau. So when you have a project, you spend a lot of time in this kind of plateau phase where you're not getting the growth that you want, 
or maybe that you feel you deserve. Um, I'm there right now with my YouTube channel. Not that I feel that I deserve growth, but I'm trying to put out really exceptional, high quality content for people that's gonna make an impact. And I haven't been making much of an impact, right? Like I'm not getting all of these views and comments and people um, being exposed to the ideas that I have, right? Um, but I know that if I just keep focusing on this, eventually, um, you know, something will happen and I'll sort of see that growth, right? So this is the, the chart I'm picturing. And um, when we have multiple projects at once, it's just gonna push that event, in my opinion, further for all of them. So rather than say you did them one at a time, like sequential, then you have your plateau and your growth. Then you could go to the next project and you have your plateau and your growth. And you're sort of seeing this um, sequential pattern. Whereas if you, if you stack them and push them all together, they're not all gonna follow the same trajectory of plateau and growth. It's gonna push that out. Like how painful is that, right? You're gonna have to like keep pushing all of these projects along for a lot longer before you get that kind of rewarding growth that you're looking for. Um, so that's the visual I keep in my head to help keep me focused. And then this idea of picking one project at a time, we can kind of take that to a micro level, right? So within that project that you're working on, you have some tasks and then you work on one task at a time. You do mono tasking. You don't want to be bouncing between multiple things because this also creates these context shifts, which is wasted energy and time. So you want to pour all of your focus and creativity into just doing that one task at a time. Like imagine, I'm I'm trying to film this YouTube video and then I just like suddenly go and start checking my email or I'm like oh I gotta work on my thumbnail for this video and I go and like do that right now like crazy right so we gotta be disciplined to just do the task in front of us and ignore other things like I don't know slack messages firing off at us or emails popping up in the corner of our screen like maybe we shouldn't be seeing those things if we want to do effective work now coming back to the macro level of just working on one project at a time. I mean, this is easier said than done, right? It's very tempting. We all have lots of ideas. There's all, always lots of things that we want to push forward in this world. And so I propose to you, it's not that you have to give up on those other ideas. In fact, you should take a bit of time to write them out in like a Google Doc, maybe throw them in some folder of ideas for later. And maybe one day you can come back to that idea. You know, the side project, that's the whole point. It's not your whole life. It's not your main thing. It's a side thing. And a project will should have a fixed duration. Like you can always reassess at the end of that time that you give yourself and keep working on it if you want. But projects are not infinite. They're like, they have a start and they have an end. So do that for yourself. Like give yourself an end date where you're like, I'm gonna try this until this time. And that's when I wanna finish it by. And if I'm not done by then yet, maybe I reassess, maybe I give myself some more time, maybe I just uh, leave that, like it's a sunk cost and I can move on. But in any case, you, you wrap it up and you move on to your next one. The next idea is around building and maintaining momentum. In Zen, there's a concept of non-attachment and how we might apply this to our side projects is to drop attachments on their outcomes. We don't want to think like when I'm filming this YouTube video, I'm not thinking about how many likes it's going to get or how many views it's going to get. I'm kind of thinking about that now. I'll probably get like 200 views, maybe like 10 likes. But um, but that's that's not what I'm thinking about. Like eh, I want to make this so that you know millions of people will see it and benefit from it. This is like this is my vision. Maybe if anything, that's um, that's kind of the mindset, you know. But but even that I'm not thinking about. I'm really just thinking I want to show up today and I want to create the most like beautiful video on these topics that I can. Um, and I want to do the best job of delivering this information in like an engaging way, right? I just want to perform the best I can today on this video. That's all I'm thinking about. Like that, that's, that's it, right? So I'm dropping the attachment on the outcome. I don't need anyone to see this. Um, I'll, I'll show it to my wife, <laughs> you know, like someone's got to see it, but, um, but yeah, that's it. So if you're developing an app and you need users for your app to be successful, I get that. Like it's, it's unsustainable if you don't have users. If nobody's paying you to do the work, you can't do the work. You need to find someone to pay you. On the other hand, since these are side projects, they don't really require money. There's no like, uh, there's no need for that. 
right? But maybe it's your dream to turn that application into your main job. And so then in order to achieve that dream, that's what you need, right? But you, uh, what I'm proposing is that you drop the attachment to that as you're in the flow of building it. And I'm sure this is how most people operate anyway, but it really is like a predicate for doing great things in the world, in my opinion. So when we can drop our attachments and just show up every day and do the best work that we can, and we keep doing this day after day, we're gonna start building momentum. And these even just small efforts every single day will keep your momentum going and build on it. And you'll be able to achieve these projects over the long run. But when you lose this momentum, like take a few days off, um, take a week off, you've, you've experienced like what that does to it. It starts draining the life out of these projects and eventually they'll die. Um, so I, I encourage you to just try and show up every single day with a little bit of effort or at least a little bit of thought on these projects. Just to even it's like an idea of a pilot light. So you kind of like keep that pilot light burning, keep that lit. So even on those days when you're not making serious progress, just put in a little time, a little effort, even just thinking about it to get your mindset right. So you know that tomorrow you're ready to, to go and keep building on that momentum. So the important thing for building momentum is to maintain consistency. And actually counterintuitively, one of the ways that you can destroy your momentum is by showing up too strongly. If you exert yourself too much in one day or maybe three days in a row of work, you're gonna be more inclined to burn out from that and need to take some time off. It's like, kind of like the harder you go, the more time you need to rest. It's like when you're at the gym, if you push your muscles excessively hard one day, you're gonna need more time to recover before you're able to work out again. So I propose to you in order to keep momentum going that you don't push yourself too hard on any one day. And instead that you just like focus on these small incremental progress that you're looking for. And this leads me into my final idea, which is to avoid overworking and embrace the power of rest. Something I wanna help people with on this channel is their work-life balance as a software developer. So we work extremely hard long hours looking at screens and we need to balance that with the correct activities outside of work this is like work-life balance and now when we have side projects going on this is just adding to that time that we have to be looking at the screen and in the sort of chair with the keyboard and in that computer mode so you, you've got to balance that out with the rest and it's like a recipe for disaster when you're putting in too many hours cumulative on your work and your side project, and it's you're guaranteed to burn out. Probably most of you watching this video have experienced burnout before. Imagine you're at the gym and you're trying to grow bigger muscles and you're on a really aggressive training schedule and you're just pushing your body like as hard as it can go and hitting the gym multiple times a day. Or imagine you're you're racing for an event, you're doing like track running and you're just sprinting every single day like as hard as you can. These things obviously are gonna break your body. Like physically, you're gonna get injured and then you won't be able to sprint around anymore or lift weights, you're gonna have to recover. You have to take like a lot of time to recover those physical muscles. But our minds work the same way. Like when we push them too hard, they need time. Like they're not just gonna recover like that, right? You need to like process and um, and rest and, and your mind is the same like these muscles. It's a muscle as well, right? So, um, so you gotta, gotta chill <laughs> a little bit need that rest time right there's a great story that i heard from author greg mccowan about the importance of rest and slow and steady progress it's about the race for the south pole so near the start of the 20th century amiston and scott were in a race to reach the south pole first amiston was uh, from Nor norway and scott had a british party so these are two groups of people who have dog sleds and they're racing to get to the south pole and um, I believe they started around similar times. So, you know, at one point this was an even race and it was kind of any man's game, right? So Amiston had the philosophy that I'm gonna go 15 miles per day, no matter what. And then when I reach that 15 mile mark, I'm gonna stop. Um, now, Scott had the philosophy that they're gonna push as hard as they possibly can every single day. So obviously your intuition might say that Scott is going to get there first because they're making the most intense effort. Um, but since I'm telling this story, you know it's the opposite. So Amiston ended up getting there like five weeks ahead of the British party. 
wasn't even close, <laughs> you know? Um, and then I, I believe like the British party tried to do it again next year and died or something. Um, but this story r reminds me at least that I think it's better to take the slow and steady approach um, to avoid that burnout basically. So if you want my advice, don't work too hard on any single day and make sure you focus on achieving like some incremental win while still reserving energy for the work bout tomorrow. So to recap my Zen approach on getting side projects done. One. Oh, fuck. So to recap, here is my Zen approach to getting side projects done. Dedicate some time at the start of your day for your project. Work on only one project at a time. Build momentum with consistent efforts and avoid pushing yourself to exhaustion. So if you embrace these four concepts for your side projects, I think not only will it help you get more work done and like accomplish more things on the projects, but I know that it'll help you live and like sort of experience those projects in more harmony with all of the other aspects of your life. And that's my goal with this video and with these ideas. So if you like this, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like on the video and consider subscribing if you want more videos like this. And you can check out my premium content over on Patreon in order to support the channel and sign up for my email newsletter, which I just send once a week. And that's a great zero cost way to support me and the work that I'm doing. Thank you so much for watching and namaste.